about uh, pollinating agents in that uh, abiotic agents is completed now biotic agents so what are biotic agents the pollinating agents which have the life those are called uh, biotic agents what are biotic agents ma the pollinating agents which have the life those are called biotic agents we know that uh, so the major so here the best example for biotic uh, agents are animals animals are the biotic agents but the pollination that takes place through animals that is called zoophily so what is zoophily ma pollination that takes place through animals that is called zoophily but here depending upon the pollinating agents zoophily is of different types so what are those different types first one is entomophily entomophily ornithophily malacophily ophiophily myrmecophily Myrmecophily, therophily, therophily. So these are all different types of zoophily. So pollination that takes place through animals that is called zoophily. So zoophily is of different types: entomophily, ornithophily, melacophily, ophiophily, and myrmecophily and therophily. So now. <coughs> The first one is entomophily. So, what is this entomophily? Pollination that takes place through insects that is called entomophily. Insect pollination. So, insect pollination is called entomophily. The study of insects is called entomology. Hence, this type of pollination is called. so insect pollination or entomophily or entomophilus pollination so but here different types of insects involved in pollination right now so what are those different types of insects butterfly flies bees or nothing but honey bees so beetles wasps so these are all different types of insects which are involved in the pollination but among these the most pollinating agents are most animal pollinating agent is insect insect the insect honey bees are honey bees are the most pollinating agents in animals are among these among these all these zoophily the insects are the most abundant pollinating agents in biotic agents so biotic agents we know so in all those biotic agents among all these biotic agents insects are the most abundant pollinating agents in biotic agents yes now what are the characteristics of entomophilus flowers we know that entomophily pollination that takes place through insects that is called entomophily so the best example for entomophilus butterflies flies bees beetles so beetles wasp etc now characteristics of entomophilus flowers now characteristics of entomophilus entomophilus flowers Yes. So the first one, flowers are large. The 
characteristics of entomophilus flowers in that first one so flowers are large and colorful colorful and uh, they have <coughs> nectar so they have rich in nectar and they contain pollen grains pollen grains and they are rich in nectar second one if the flowers are small they become conspicuous by their grouping so if you look at our surrounding if you look at our surrounding we can find out different types of flowers in those flowers some flowers are small and some flowers are large if it is large no problem if the flowers are very small how they are going to attract the insects for getting pollination so if the flowers are small in those plants all these flowers are grouped and they become conspicuous as a result they can attract the insect towards those flowers for getting pollination that's not if the flowers are small they become conspicuous by their grouping they become conspicuous by their grouping and if you look at our surrounding we can find out different flowers as we discussed previously but so in those flowers in some plants non essential organs that means in some plants petals are not bright in color or petals are reduced in that condition other floral parts like calyx and corolla they become showy example for that so in case of bougainvillea petals are that means sepals are bright in color than petals what is the condition here ma in some plants the petals are not bright in color in such conditions other floral parts like calyx right now so it attract the insects or it became showy or it became conspicuous example for that uh, bougainvillea it is also called paper flowers paper flowers and uh, so these are the examples in which condition ma when petals are not showy or conspicuous at the time other floral parts like calyx become conspicuous and they can attract the insects towards those plants for getting pollination example for that bougainvillea in case of bougainvillea sepals become conspicuous and they are bright in color so these are the conditions and one more characteristics of entomophilus flowers so here to visit the flower the flowers has to provide some rewards see flowers has to provide some rewards to visit the pollinating agents to visit whom why i am teaching why i am teaching here i am teaching here for what for my survival or for some other purpose right now so why i am teaching here i am getting money from the organization similarly why pollinating agents that means animal has to visit that flower because so they are getting they should get some benefit from the flowers because of that reason they are they are visiting that flowers those are nothing but rewards here so flowers has to provide some rewards to whom pollinating agents here what are those rewards rewards are nothing but its pollen grains and the nectar so to sustain the continuous visiting to sustain which one continuous visiting of the pollinating agents towards flowers the flowers has to provide some rewards what are those rewards rewards are nothing but pollen grains pollen grains and nectar because of these two things right now pollinating agent visit the flowers frequently right now sir what is the benefit to the flowers here so the pollinating agents collecting pollen grains and nectar but what is the use of the plants what is the use to those flowers see here when these pollinating agents visit the flowers the pollen grains we know that the pollen grains are somewhat sticky so these pollen grains attach to the body of pollinating agents 
and uh, moreover here the pollinating agents are not constant they may so visit different types of the flowers in a day so that uh, so one pollinating agent uh, visit uh, not only one flower different flowers so that uh, when it visit one flower at the time the pollen grains may attach to lower abdomen of the insects so that and when it leave that flower and uh, land on another flower at the time whatever the pollen grains are attached on the lower abdomen of the insect they may fall down on the another flower as a result it facilitate cross pollination or pollination as a result it facilitate which one cross pollination or pollination so this is the thing and uh, if you if you observe different in some species of the flowers so on the petals we can find out some Thickenings or markings. Those thickenings or markings are nothing but uh, pollen guiders or nectar guiders. See, by seeing those markings, the pollinating agents uh, move towards those uh, markings. As a result, they are guiding the pollinating agents towards uh, nectar. Towards nectar. Example for that, uh, viola. In which members we can find out those type of markings? Viola. Even hibiscus, on the petals of the hibiscus, we can find out black color markings. See, this is the one petal of hibiscus. If you observe these things, you may find out like these scars on the petal of hibiscus. So, these scars are nothing but nectar guiders. These are nothing but which one? Nectar guiders or pollen. Nectar guiders or pollen guiders. <coughs> and see here, in some members of the plants, the pollen rewards are placed in safe places. Pollen rewards are placed in same places. So, example for this, Amorphophallus. Amorphophallus is nothing but a German cund. It is the longest flower in plant kingdom. It is to grow nearly 6 feet. In those plants, the pollen nectar or <coughs> nectars or pollen rewards are placed in safe places. And the similar, so the similar kind of the expression or similar kind we can observe in the members of so pronuba moth and yucca tagisella. Pronuba moth, moth and yucca. Pronuba moth. and yucca yucca tagisella so it is a plant and uh, the pranuba moth is a moth this pranuba moth lay its eggs in the locules of the yucca tagisella as a result what will happen ma the pranuba moth get pollinated yucca plant and the yucca plant protect the eggs of pranuba moth so that right now in the absence of the yucca plant, the pranuba moth cannot complete its life cycle and at the same time, in the absence of yucca plant, pranuba moth unable to complete its life cycle. So, if any one organism is absent, another organism unable to complete their life cycle. So, these are all <coughs> character. These are all characteristics of the entomophilus flowers. These are all characteristics of entomophilus flowers. Hmm. The next one is ornithophily. So pollination that takes place through birds that is called ornithophily. Sir, how they gave name ornithophily? Study of birds is called ornithology. The pollination that takes place through the birds that is called ornithophily. So this is about ornithophily. But uh, so, in which members? In some tropical regions, ornithophily is a, in some tropical regions, in some tropical region we can find out uh, ornithophily. Uh, birds are uh, predominant pollinating agents than insects. Where much? In some tropical regions, birds are the most abundant pollinating agents than insects. So, example for that sunbird, these are all examples for ornithophily. After that, chiropterophily. Chiropterophily. 
chiroptericulae. Sir, what is this chiroptericulae? Pollination that takes place through bats. Pollination that takes place through bats that is called chiropterophily. Example for this. So, Adamsonia and the Chysalia. So, Adamsonia and the Chysalia, these are all examples for chiropterophily. So, Ophiophily. Pollination that takes place through snake. Snakes. That is called Ophiophily. Myrmacophily. Pollination that takes place through ants. That is called Myrmacophily. So, Therophily. So, pollination that takes place through squirrel. Quiril, that is called therophily. So, melacophily. Pollination that takes place through snail. Melacophily. Pollination that takes place through snail, that is called melacophily. So, ornithophily. Pollination that takes place through birds. Characterophily. Pollination that takes place through bat. Ornithophily. Pollination that takes, sorry, ophiophily that takes place through snakes. So, myrmacophily pollination that takes place through ants and the therophily pollination that takes place through squirrel and the melacophily pollination that takes place through snails. In addition to these things, uh, some of the so, tree dwelling uh, animals, rodents and uh, some of the garden lizard and the gecko lizard and uh, some of the so, <coughs> reptiles. So, these are also involved, in, involved as a pollinating agents. So now some special types of the mechanisms. <coughs> For example, in case of uh, Ophrys, pseudo population, in case of Calotropis, And yellow trophy is a clip. Clip mechanism, etc. <coughs> there are different types of pollination mechanisms. So, yeah, for example, if you take the ficus, flight trap mechanism. In case of ficus, uh, fly trap mechanism. So, <coughs> sorry, ophrys. In ophrys, pseudo copulation, calotrophis, so clip mechanism. So, in ficus, fly trap mechanism. So, these are all different types of uh, mechanisms of the pollination. <coughs>